Okay, hi YouTube, Mr. User Boss here, and in this video I'm going to be doing quite a different comparison video, something which I found kind of interesting myself and I hope you also find interesting. So what we're actually doing is comparing the experience of playing Ratchet & Clank Size Matters on the PlayStation Portable with the experience of playing the Ratchet & Clank Collection on the PlayStation Vita. So instantly you should notice the slight graphical downgrade. The colours are muted and the models are much simpler. The buttons, however, are still, you know, they live up to expectations, they're just as good as the ones on the PlayStation Vitas, in my opinion. They're a little bit squishier, but by no means worse. Now, the screen is also just as bright, you know, we've seen pretty much no upgrade there, as you can see. So, the sound is where the things start to diverge a little bit. Not only are the speakers smaller and quieter, but it does crackle occasionally, and there's just less depth to the music. Also bear in mind that there are not two analog sticks here, so you can't control like the typical control scheme. However, Ratchet and Clank on the PSP does sort of get around this by using the L and R to look around, and it kind of works. So as a device to actually play games on, the PSP is actually quite a hefty piece of kit. So even in its third revision, the PSP 3000, which this is, it's still quite a bit heavier than the PSV to Slim. On top of that, it's much thicker, and it just feels nowhere near as nice in the hand. I mean, it doesn't curve as well. And yeah, it's very, very ancient in comparison. So, taking a look at Ratchet and Clank Collection on the PS Vita. So, we are currently playing Ratchet and Clank 1. And bear in mind that this collection does contain two other full games, which is a huge bonus. I mean, these games are absolutely massive. And having Ratchet and Clank 1, 2, and 3 in your pocket is just, you know, I've still not quite got over that fact. But anyway, moving on to the gameplay. So, as you can see, I mean, this is a PS2 game, and it's actually made before Size Matters, so in some ways it's actually less, sort of, evolved. For example, the first person mode is very, very clunky, platforming is very slow, and the enemy AI is just sometimes ridiculous. And it's only when you play games like this, you know, from the last generation, that you kind of remember all those things that we come to just accept in modern games, you know, things like being able to strafe, you can't do that here. So yeah. But in terms of the actual amount of detail on screen, it's massively better, better on the Vita. I mean, as you can see, there's just huge amounts going on here, and I'm really surprised that it runs so well. Having said that, though, this is not running at native resolution, whereas the PSP game is, and that results in a game that actually doesn't really look any sharper than its PSP cousin. On close inspection, both look fairly fuzzy, which is not exactly great, but, you know, it's still more than playable if you hold it from a distance. Now one other thing that was very obvious when playing the PSP version is that the controls were just more responsive. Now I mean, I know that this game was from a time before the one we're used to, and so even on the fast camera mode for some reason the camera pans very slowly, whereas on the PSP version, you know where it's built from the ground up to work for the PSP, they've just sort of, you know, they fine-tuned it to a point where it just feels very natural, even though you've got less controls there, the whole game is much more limited, and yet it just feels more natural. Sound quality in the PS Vita game is significantly better, and there's a clear stereo effect which just isn't present on the PSP version. The sound is higher resolution and has more clarity. However, in the cutscenes, which are still rendered in the PlayStation 2's native resolution, you can sort of really tell these two apart. Like, the PlayStation Portable cutscenes are all rendered at PSP's native resolution, whereas the Vita, it's not, so it kind of interrupts the experience a bit. You're sort of jumping between Vita and PS2, and it's a little bit jarring sometimes. So to conclude, the PlayStation Vita gaming experience is definitely better than the PlayStation Portable's one. However, the difference is not as much as you'd expect it to be, given the differences in power between the systems. But bear in mind that it's not all about how the games look. The Vita Slim is slimmer, it's got a better battery life, there are three games in one, and it has full trophy support. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, please give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe for more.